for this our lord what you are going to say lord we pray we thank you for all the things you have given us lord as we are learning about lord prayer and intercession lord whatever we will be learning lord it should be added to your king into our learning and we will be using it for your kingdom expansion lord guide us protect us provide lord in jesus name we pray amen amen thank you thank you sukino all right so uh we have almost come to the end of our course is what i would say let's see how it goes i mean if i can uh, uh complete everything today then great that that would be it we don't need another class tomorrow otherwise we uh, will will have you know a quick class tomorrow as well um and with regard to your uh, question paper Uh, i have posted some questions regarding prayer and intercession so uh, you could please work on it and uh, submit it it's fairly simple i think so so i've kept it quite broad uh, so that you know you will be able to answer them uh, those questions and uh, uh, your uh, marks i will definitely your first assignment marks i know you haven't yet received it it's been a little bit um, you know uh, uh, like i have been behind my schedule so you know i apologize for that uh but yeah i'll do my best to uh, you know have your uh, results out as quickly as possible the first assignment and then you know soon after your second ass- assignments because i think submission of second assignment is next week itself so yeah soon after that uh, i will need to correct it quickly and give it back to you so uh, that will be done so please do make time and uh, complete your assignments um uh, if at all you know, we finish off the class today then tomorrow's hour you can use it for your assignments so uh, let's get into you know today's uh, subject here uh, basically i i begin with chapter 24 first which talks about some stories of uh, men and women you know, who have uh, served god who have been people of prayer who have been um, uh investing themselves in um, revival okay and we have studied about revival and i i think uh, one particular person father nash i talked a lot about him earlier so you already have a picture but you know i just go ahead and uh, summarize it once again so basically uh, when we read about uh, father nash i uh, wanted to play some video for us but i really do not know whether um, you know and i can spend spend time in the lecture uh, hour by uh, playing a video so i let me just pass on this youtube link to all of you so you can watch it later maybe mm, it just gives a summary of the life of uh, daniel nash a little more information uh, as compared to the notes as well so what do we see uh, about the life of uh, daniel she started out as a preacher uh, he was quite um, uh, i mean he wasn't doing all that well if you look at the standards of uh, you know the outcome uh, so um, anyway at age 48 uh, he decided to totally commit himself to prayer he he had a uh, burden for prayer and he committed himself to prayer for the meetings of charles finney okay uh, and we know charles finney is one of the uh, famous evangelists of his time uh, of his times and uh, a lot of people uh, who heard the gospel through the ministry of charles finney they uh, gave their lives to christ so as part of uh, the ministry you know, father nash committed himself to pray uh, and completely prayer okay? he dedicated himself completely to prayer and he would just quietly go into towns and cities uh, i've already told us that for uh, at least um, something like four weeks four weeks in advance and then he would begin to pray along with a team of uh, other prayer warriors so the numbers would be something like 3 5 even you know as uh, as many as he could gather so uh, they would rent out a room in uh, that new city that the crusade would be held and then for you can think about it, right like four weeks they are investing in prayer day and night uh, and then you know finney would come over and he would uh, go ahead and uh, preach and a lot of people would respond so you know, we see uh, the results of finney's ministry um, has been quite remarkable okay. uh, many people gave their lives to christ uh, and the funny thing is that 
after Daniel Nash passed away, um, when Finney continued the same ministry as he was you know, all these years, he did not see the same results. Okay. And thereby, uh, what, what uh, we, we say and what even Finney recognized is the power in the, in the uh, results or the uh, outcome was really because of the prayer of Daniel Nash. Okay, at the team, or in other words, it's not it's not the people also, but the fact that prayer was was uh, uh, you know going up on behalf of of the ministry, on behalf of the people. So that is is what we see now. Uh, Daniel Nash, you know, apparently once he along with the team, they had gone to a, a city and uh, rented out a house as as always and. The lady who gave them that room, she noticed that for three days, these people did not come out or they did not even have a meal. She, she was noticing all these things uh, and she was really um, uh, worried uh, and she could hear groaning from within that room. And she, uh, she reported this to Finney. She said, Brother Finney, this is happening. You know, these people uh, uh, don't seem to be doing fine. And also, uh, they are lying prostrate on the floor and they are continuously groaning. You know, how, what, what is wrong with them? You know, do they need any help? Uh, would you please come and see what is going on? So uh, Charles Finney told her that, hey, it's not necessary. I mean, don't worry about them. We don't have to go and see them. Basically, what they have is the spirit of travail. Okay. To, the way Paul said, you know, to birth Christ uh, in you that I travail. So in the same way, in prayer, they were travailing to birth uh, the gospel, travailing to birth, uh, you know, believers in that particular city. So such was the, the prayer and the movement that, uh, uh, you know, Daniel Nash led. And you, you notice in his life that uh, his heart was all about uh, approaching the throne of God, being filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, seeing the power of the Holy Spirit manifest in the ministry of Finney. So uh, he was completely given over to prayer. Okay, And uh, uh, that was... You know, that, that was something amazing and we can learn from that. Uh, also, you know, there is another incident when uh, in one of Finney's meetings, apparently young people who were rebellious, you know, young men who were giving them uh, threats and, uh, you know, who, who did not want the meetings to happen. And they, they were doing different things, okay, to disrupt. But... Apparently, Daniel Nash, he was praying and he came out uh, and he spoke to uh, some of these young men and he was, you know, quite firm. He said that God will break your ranks in less than one week. Okay. And then uh, he says, you know, some of you will actually either turn to God or, you know, uh, basically like if they choose to continue their own way, then you're heading towards destruction, you're heading towards hell. So he makes those statements to them and uh, it, it was noted that Sometime later, you know, one of the, uh, apparently uh, the next Tuesday, um, you know, soon after that, one of the young persons, the leader of the group came uh, and he confessed, okay, uh, confessed Christ and he gave his life to Christ. Uh, and the way he accepted Christ was he, you know, in the book of Acts, people when they hear uh, Peter preach, they say, what shall we do? They were cut to their heart. They knew that. Uh, Holy Spirit is convicting them and they have to do something, right? But they just didn't know what to do. So then Peter had to tell them, repent, be baptized. So he had to give them uh, the actions to receive Christ. And in the same way, one of these rebellious young men, imagine he comes up, first he is threatened and now he comes up and says, uh, uh, okay, what shall I do, Mr. Finney? Uh, to be saved and then Finney, you know, uh, uh, shares with him and Finney encourages him to go back to his companions and talk about his changed life. And such was the uh, turning around of people uh, through the ministry of Finney because of the prayer support that Nash and the team were providing. So, uh, soon, like, uh, yeah.
Yeah, there are there are. I think it will be good if you could, you know, read through uh, what has been given in our notes because it's written so beautifully. Um, so I I don't think I will read it for us. Uh, but yeah, you could just go and look it up. Uh, and uh, you know, it is told about Finney that <clears throat> once Nash died, and he realized that uh, that prayer support is no longer there. He tried. He continued to do the crusades, uh, but he saw. Uh, that the results were not as um, uh, you know like the magnet uh, obviously you know when you preach the gospel people do turn but he realized that the kind of impact that he could make while the prayer was happening uh, was you know nothing compared to what was going on now so in finney's ministry he made a decision and he started he left evangelism okay and he uh, settled with uh, pastoring you know some of the churches so he he literally had to leave the crusades because he was not seeing results anymore you know after nash's death so very clearly you know we see that there is an impact of uh this impact of prayer okay on the uh, it's not just ministry you know now we are talking more in terms of the uh, uh, revival that we are praying for but anything and everything as you supported by prayer we will see god's power release into it you know the holy spirit uh, uh, working in in that area uh, and releasing the kingdom of god so that is the importance of what we are learning we are learning it from the life of one individual but you remember in the last class i shared with you about william j seymour and how he was a man who prayed they 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 people have written it he started praying for you know x number of hours then it became 7 hours so he was praying in the spirit things like that so people who have uh, completely given place to that burden you know that that the holy spirit puts on our hearts to pray okay the results that we see uh, certainly they will be uh, way more than what we will achieve only by the service that we do because we are opening the doors for god to work we're opening the doors for his kingdom to be released it's as simple as that so you could just go back to lives of different people and uh, you know notice that prayer uh, was the anchor on which you know several victories were won again i told you about evan roberts you know about evan roberts it said that uh, he was uh, he was not an educated man and he gave himself to prayer to such an extent that as a young person it seems he would be praying all the time all the time even when he is walking on the roads around people would look at him and say hey he mad mad person why is he moving his mouth like that you know uh, what is he talking who is he talking to there's nobody standing in front of him but evan roberts was given to prayer he decided i'm going to pray okay and as one man he committed himself to prayer uh, and i think i uh, refer to like pandita rama bai last time um, it's not there in your notes i thought it was but it's not there in your notes but it's there in in your uh, uh, when you study about you know men and women who have served god so she raised up uh, uh, like a prayer movement and there were students right uh, under her care young girls who started praying who started committing their lives to god and the holy spirit manifested so so wonderfully the holy spirit manifested that you know we read stories like these girls used to pray and they couldn't stop praying the okay, young girls uh, and it, apparently one night you know one of the girls was praying and something like uh, you know she was set on fire it looked like she was set on fire and others tried to throw water to quench it but it was not real fire you know so stories like that uh, come out of uh, people who had committed their lives to prayer groups of people who had committed themselves to praying we saw about the moravian uh, revival isn't it 24 hours 24 hours uh, men and women how they did not stop and this prayer went on this intercession went on for about 100 years and the missionary impact that it had we also saw i hope kansas city how from 1999 up till now you know the a uh, prayer has not stopped and i read for us some of the outcomes of the ministry that we have observed so you know what are we saying we are saying that uh, yes we are called to do uh, what 
God wants us to do. But there's something like um, the fuel, okay? Uh, the the vehicle has to move. But how well can the vehicle move without your fuel, whether that's a petrol or a diesel, or, and the quality of the petrol also these days we talk about it. So you put in the fuel uh, and the vehicle is powered. And if the you know vehicle, imagine you know you just use a cycle with your own power. It you can't do much with it. You can reach some distance, but you can't do much with it. But something that can be fuel, take a scooter. You put your fuel into it, and you know it can uh, power up much much better than a cycle. And in the same way, when we open up ourselves to prayer, when we commit ourselves to prayer, we see that uh, the way God works. You know, it's it's amazing. It's amazing, uh, which we cannot see minus the prayer. Uh, and this the story. These stories are just to encourage us, just to you know get our attention uh, to the power of prayer. Somebody as humble as Nasha, apparently, uh, you know, people like it, it is written about him on his tomb. It says Daniel Nash, laborer with Finney, mighty in prayer. That is. The name that is given to him, and it is also said that his uh, tomb—it's in some, uh, you know, not very significant uh, part uh, of New York. It's just in some corner, and this is all that is, uh, you know, written about him. Uh, and compared to Finney, you know, he did not have uh, any fame, or he was not talked about. People did not recognize him. But you see, what really matters when we give ourselves to prayer is that heaven recognizes. Okay, and uh, uh, remember, we said earlier that intercessors. If you take a preacher, for example, they would stand in front of people. They will be noticed. Uh, you know, they will be applauded. Um, so many things that that one can receive. Okay, when they are up, uh, like in the forefront. But somebody who's an intercessor, they're usually uh, behind closed doors. They their ministry, maybe they are praying for days and hours, um, and even nights through the nights. But nobody recognizes it. So it's a ministry where one has to know that the audience is really God and heaven. Okay, uh, we may not get noticed. And even Epaphras, remember we said that uh, the way Paul wrote about him, he gave him the same honor that he would give any other minister in the uh, fivefold ministry offices. So, an intercessor is not lower in any way just because they don't get the recognition by people. But an intercessor is definitely one who is recognized in the sight of heaven. And there is a great reward for those who will invest themselves in prayer. So you know that is something we must uh, not forget, and that should be an encouragement for us. You no, know, Daniel Nash, nothing much was written about him. Also, just mighty in prayer and a little bit, you know, in papers here and there. Nothing compared to Finney. But you know what is important is that heaven recognizes this humble man, and when. He was so powerful, so mighty in prayer. Obviously, you remember Acts chapter 19 when these um, uh, sons of Sceva, they go and they try to cast out demons just like Paul and Jesus. They use the name of Jesus. Okay, uh, They try to use that authority. The, what do the demons uh, turn around and say? They say, hey, Paul we know. Um, G Jesus we know. Who are you? Right. So that stature in the spiritual realm uh, is also something that you know one has whether people recognize this or not the demonic realm definitely recognizes okay those who are in stature in the spiritual realm so these are the things that must inspire us and uh, awaken us to a, a kind of prayer a kind of devotion to prayer that um, that can only yield results, you know, uh, uh, like nothing else. Otherwise, we will be engaged in our ministry. We'll keep doing whatever we need to do. There's, there's no uh, harm uh, in doing that, but we will lack that impact. 
we will lack the uh, presence of god we will lack what god wants to do uh, in his way and uh, to his extent right so you just open yourselves up to prayer and anyone in history who has committed themselves to this kind of prayer has seen incredible results and that is the testimony of daniel nash he burned with passion for the kingdom of god and the kingdom of god was able to advance so powerfully uh, through the ministry of intercession okay uh, so never think that hey i am not a preacher or i am not so and so what will i do but invest yourself in what god is calling you to do especially prayer okay and prayer is very very powerful so here in our notes we have the uh, um, account of another individual called as john hyde okay john hyde uh, is related to uh, the revival in sialkot punjab uh, this is way back way back 1904 is the time uh, when this revival was uh, uh, recorded so basically john hyde his story goes something like he's a young missionary uh from the us and he decides to come here to india and again he is somebody he commits himself to prayer and looking at his life you know people uh, say that uh, he used to pray you know whole nights similar to daniel nash he totally committed himself to prayer and he had prayed for years uh, in his lifetime uh, he also was you know so deeply to prayer that he would even forget food water rest you know that kind of uh, intercession uh, he was involved in and you know you uh, notice that he got names people identified him with certain titles is it uh, he is praying hide or uh, apostle of prayer the man that never sleeps so he came to be recognized like that because of his commitment now in 1904 1904 Uh, apparently a revival broke out in in uh, one of the schools and uh, you know girls some girls over there they publicly confessed their sins and they were accepting jesus and this re- revival was spreading okay it was uh, spreading it was uh, noticed in other places as well uh and daniel nash you know along with uh, some others they they were sort of you know instrumental in uh, uh, keeping this revival uh, and what they did was they invited for people to come uh, they uh, invited many to join them and engage in prayer they had a tent uh, apparently something like that where they said okay leaders uh, different people please come let us all pray so that we can see more of the work of god uh, among us and they also uh, wrote out some questions you know uh, and uh, wanted people to sign it they wanted people to commit themselves okay by answering those questions to come to a decision and assign assign that paper so the questions that they had put across was are you praying for quickening in your own life in the life of your fellow workers and in the church so somebody who who was going to join them in prayer they needed to think about this do you really want a quickening in your own personal life the life of your fellow workers in your church then are you longing for greater power of the holy spirit in your own life and work and are you convinced that you cannot go on without this power then will you pray that you may be you may not be ashamed of jesus do you believe that prayer is the great means for securing the spiritual awakening will you set apart one half hour each day as soon after noon as possible to pray for this awakening and are you willing to pray till the awakening comes so they uh, may together with you know other people what uh, john hyde did is he asked for this commitment to pray so that they will see a mighty move of god in uh, punjab then the convention actually happened okay and 30 days before the actual convention took place okay so this is all preparation for a convention and then uh, 30 days before the convention remember i said hide together with others so there was one uh, mr peterson along with him they started praying day and night 
30 days prior uh, and they were joined by uh, another person called Turner as well. And at that time, uh, when they were praying for awakening in uh, Sialkot, Punjab, that's the place, right? God had positioned him over here. So that was his desire. Uh, he also heard of the Welsh revival of the Evan Roberts thing happening in Wales. So it really inspired and encouraged them that, hey, God can do that in one part of the world. Why can he not do it here? And here we are, you know, me, Peterson, uh, another person called Turner joined. They were praying together and they had invited many others to come join them, you know, to ask God for the uh, awakening. So the these meetings started uh, and these meetings ended up being very, very powerful. Right? After 30 days, the convention started. Uh, and it is said that often the glory rested on these meetings in a mighty way. Okay, And uh, uh, the, uh, John had continued to travail in prayer. And God gave them a, a passage. This was from Isaiah 62. And we have read this uh, passage where we said that, uh, you know, I have... I, Put your watchmen on the walls. So God gave them that encouragement and said that I have called you people to pray. What, what do watchmen do? We watch through prayer. Spiritually, that is what watchmen do. So God gave them that word. He encouraged them and told them, you know, keep on praying. Don't stop. Because that passage also says that uh, don't give uh, him rest, right? Uh, until he comes and establishes Jerusalem. So it's as if to say that keep praying, keep seeking, awakening, you know, keep uh, reaching out to God. And as a team and as a group, you know, they started doing this. And then it happened. You know, the revival started breaking out. Uh, and there were manifestations of the spirit uh, in the revival. Now, also, it is said that many of the occurrences were not written down, probably. You know, So that is why sometimes you know, we, we don't even get the accounts. Maybe these revivals have happened in some places, but they've not written about it. But with whatever information we have, we can see that, um, uh, you know, people were confessing their sins. Uh, we could see that, you know, God's uh, spirit came upon in such a way that they were filled with joy. They were filled with laughter. They, uh, they also had, uh, you know, song. And uh, something about in these meetings, you know, John Hyde, he, he uh, was filled with so much joy that he danced as well. Right? So God's spirit came upon people, they were da dancing uh, and they were, uh, you know, just joyful, so, so joyful. So these are all um, manifestations that we read about. There were visions, you know, people had visions uh, during this revival. Some people also said that uh, there were trance-like episodes that happened. Right? So there were different kinds of uh, expressions, manifestations of the revival. And uh, at the, around that time, 1907 was a time when there was a plague that swept over India. And John, uh, he, through prayer, he uh, also pressed in for healing uh, from that plague. Okay, and he writes that I have seen remarkable answers to prayer of the recovery of people from the plague. Jesus is living and can bring and remove pestilence. So he experienced that as well. And that is what he uh, confirmed that even healings started taking place as they were pressing in prayer. So uh, his agony. Okay. Or the cry of his heart. He has seen all this through through prayer, uh, the manifestation of uh, the spirit of God. Okay? But the cry of his heart, you know, as he went on in prayer, it became, Father, give me these souls or I die. Okay, So that became the kind of uh, uh, passion that God gave him because of the time that he invested, the efforts that he invested, and more than anything, the willingness to uh, give oneself to prayer. You know, the passion for souls took over John Hyde. Uh, and John Hyde, he started his journey uh, back to America, you know, uh, in 1911. And later, 
very soon he died he died at a very young age you know uh, um uh, at the age of 47 apparently john hyde died uh, and it is said about john hyde now i don't know how far this is uh, uh, you know true but they say that he had spent so much time in prayer uh, and you know hours in prayer and not slept and you know you know fell before the lord falling prostrate and praying and just a lot of time in prayer that when he died apparently his heart had moved from the left to the right you know so uh, people use that to say that he his heart was so moved in god that even the literal heart had actually moved its position within his chest okay so uh, that was the kind of commitment that john hyde had uh, in prayer and he saw you know the spirit of god breaking forth uh, and uh, uh, a move of god uh, during his times so these are all examples of men and women you know who um, who saw uh, things turned around to prayer uh, and this is the encouragement to us you know we should never underestimate uh, what can happen if me you know just one person i commit myself to prayer or let's say a uh, husband and wife you both commit yourself to prayer and say we will trust god for a revival just start pray okay who knows how god would lead it or a small group we commit ourselves and say ha we are a small group but god honors prayer every prayer it can be any group right so these are all people who are not so much in the forefront and yet today we are talking about what we have learned from their lives and their commitment to prayer so who is to say from where god can bring an awakening you know for all you know you remember once i shared uh, a testimony uh, of a of a prophet who was sick uh, before going for a time of ministry and god gave that person a vision uh, where somebody was praying for the healing of this this prophet that night and uh, uh, it was as if you know some warm oil was poured on that that prophet's stomach and he felt better and then he asked god how how did you pour out this healing oil on me god god said because somebody prayed and somebody was praying in tongues and i told you that it was uh, and god gave him a vision and showed him it was just some elderly person you know in some far away village um Uh, in i don't know where mexico or somewhere who was praying in tongues and that person also probably did not know who they were praying for but the impact of prayer through the life of anyone who commits themselves to prayer uh, is what we are talking about so you know we just have to yield to god so uh, is there anything that you all want to add Okay. Uh, just before that, uh, Sipke, you no, know, I can't see anybody in the waiting room here. I I get a notification, uh, but I I don't have a notification here. So if there is one, then I can help. But it doesn't look like. Can you ask that person to try again, please? Ma'am, actually, I got a WhatsApp from Jafina. She was trying to come inside, but it's saying that uh, trying. trying or trying in the waiting room waiting room the host will admit you like that something ah uh, is is she on the on the correct course can you please check with her if it is prayer and intercession ma'am i sent it her the this meeting link also but okay. she she says it's not working oh i'm sorry i i wouldn't know what could have caused it yeah because here there's no uh, the notification said can you otherwise i can help yeah so uh yeah that's about people uh, who have committed themselves to prayer so i just want to leave it open for a few minutes in case you had something to add or if you know of any such revival stories i just like to add one more thing over here so when we pray right it's not even for fame um 
because sometimes we want to be known as prayer warriors or sometimes uh, we want our group to be known that hey you know this group has prayed for we prayed for two decades and finally you know revival broke out in the city or we want to say our church we have invested in a revival for many many years and now revival broke out you know what instead of looking at it that way if we all can just quietly pray sincerely pray you know uh what god wants to do he will do it and we don't have to worry about which group prayed because we prayed this happened you know because we prayed that happened yes we i understand the the mentality behind it it encourages us to know that yeah we prayed for this and we saw god move in that way so but i think it's a call to go beyond that to just sincerely pray don't worry about whether a group or a church or a community gets recognized for uh, the results later on because that's where a lot of people get stuck you know we 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 want that recognition that we prayed for revival or we prayed for this and then it happened so yeah we shouldn't get into things like that but just sincerely pray and i'm i'm sure you know god will work and we will see amazing uh, results so anyone here like uh, you have a prayer group or um you have a prayer partner and you have seen god work basically i mean you've given yourself to prayer maybe you know prolonged period of time and then you see some results yes yes sevia yeah but i don't know whether this is re- relevant to this i i, yeah. I don't mean to a long time of prayer and all that but uh-huh. uh, uh i do have a friend with whom i pray mm-hmm. uh, ma- ma- another mother so we would pray like uh, for our children's schools as well as you know the city that we are in while we mm-hmm. do that um mm-hmm. so um one thing that uh, really amazed me was uh, there is a program called avana in uh in churches which uh, is mainly for children um uh to uh, uh, learn the word of god you know they are encouraged to memorize scriptures and not like sunday school but it's mainly from the uh, from bible as well as from the life of missionaries and all that so it's an uh, it's a program for kids so usually um uh, in in the schools in our city uh, none of the children you know would be part of avana and all because it's uh, it's a christian kids who would go for avana so uh one thing that uh, uh, really i was so joyful was like in my daughter's class uh, uh, she's she's studying in a public school there were two children who came from her class in in amana program uh so that's a, a you know it's a um, i would say uh, very rarely that would happen Ma, so yeah we were like very encouraged uh and it implies that you know there are other christian parents uh, whose kids are in the school and even uh, my daughter is very uh, happy uh, very encouraged yeah that really motivated us to you know keep on praying um uh, you know schools are just a part of the society right of the yeah 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 so i just wanted to share that thank you yeah please god uh, the fear is so encouraging isn't it um, and in our context so um, excuse me again uh, sometimes we look at these stories 
of great men and women and then we get intimidated because we want to compare ourselves with okay i prayed and then the crusade uh, many people gave their lives to christ in a crusade you know but then i think it's all about sincerity and obedience so in your context this was the opportunity to pray that children will uh, uh, learn from that program and uh, you prayed and you've seen the results of it you know so that is uh, that is so um, precious and i think each one of us in our own context we can find opportunities and um, pray and see results and that will inspire us to pray even more so thank you divya thank you for sharing that uh, so i think what i'll do is yeah what i'll do is i'll just quickly touch on the uh, chapter over here 23 uh, basically in this uh, chapter uh, we are encouraged to trust god in prayer and know that prayer is the place where the action is now exodus 17 Verses nine through eleven. It is an account where the Amalekites, you know, come to fight uh, uh, God's people, and Moses is is the leader at that time. And what they do is they choose uh, a set of people to go and fight the Amalekites. But Moses goes up to a mountain and he raises his hands. Okay, and uh, it it so happens like as Moses is raising his hands with the rod of God. as long as his hands are up the uh, children of israel are winning but when the hands go down they are they are starting to lose so he has the help of joshua and her they hold up moses's hands and continue to keep the uh, rod of god you know up in the air so that way the uh, children of israel consistently keep winning against the amalekites so from this passage you know the the picture the parallel that that we can draw is that as long as you know we uh we keep seeking god okay we are able to see his victories in our lives the moment we stop engaging you know again this is exactly what we were talking about in the case of father nash and finney as long as they were involved in intercession that was victory but the moment the engagement in prayer came down you know the impact was no longer there so we have to understand that <clears throat> the real battle the real battle was not the israelites fighting the amalekites why that was important they needed men to go physically and war against the enemy that was definitely needed action but the the real uh position that one needed to take was on the mountain with the rod of god held up high which moses did and moses in that sense you know we we can say that it's like prayer he was engaging in prayer he was seeking god and that had a direct impact on the men who were physically fighting the enemy so we have to realize that there is an investment to be made in prayer okay while the results of action is there the main action is in prayer so if the main action happens in prayer you know we will see whether it is the harvest of souls for the kingdom or you know the manifestations of the gifts of the spirit whether the you know manifestations of the spirit in signs wonders miracles the healings um deliverances transformation of the city you know anything and everything when the real action happens in prayer the resulting action will be seen in the natural and that is the call you know so keep going higher up and another thing here we notice is you know he's holding up the rod of god high so in the realm of the spirit we talked about many things in this course okay but please take it as an introduction a mere introduction to the world of prayer because 
you know the prayer of asking and receiving we have discussed that isn't it we have talked about praying in the will of god we have talked about intercession as a ministry okay we have talked about you know praying together we have talked about so many different things but these are some of the basics that we need for our lives and as we press it i'm sure that there is so much more in the realm of prayer now who is to say that you know to what extent each one of us is going to experience the power of prayer right amazing amazing things can happen i've read uh, i've read and i've also heard uh, of uh, um, you know the the um audio um audio um i don't know what you call it but basically the the accounts of uh, smith wigglesworth right it, it's been made into an become like an audio book so i i've heard those and you know he talks about uh, how he also engaged in prayer and as he went deeper and deeper in prayer miracles started taking place you know smith wigglesworth is is one of those men who is um who has accounted for resurrections from dead from the dead okay so once he talks about how there was a child who died in his arms uh, and uh, he he didn't know what to do right uh, what will the family say if they come and see this this child dead in my arms but he believed in what scripture said and he pressed in a prayer and said no lord this child has to come back to life and then the child did so you know the things that people have experienced by believing in god's word engaging themselves giving themselves to prayer it's incredible so uh, even as we wrap up this course i think uh, i i'll just stop with this okay we won't have another class we can just stop with this uh, even as each one of you who you know, develops your own personal uh, prayer life and also to you know, learn more about prayer uh, i'm sure that you know god will do incredible things in us and through us okay and i i really hope uh, this course has benefited to uh, benefited all of you um and what i'll do is um, as we wrap up uh, on the google classroom i will also maybe share a couple of other books that you can read to strengthen yourself in the area of prayer um uh, so along with the course material so there will be some reading and you have your holidays coming up so you can spend time just going through those books and um you know firming up many of the truths that we have uh, introduced okay so yeah uh, with that uh, let me just uh, wrap up this class and uh, i would also request you know someone to pray and close off so yeah if one of you can pray then uh, we complete this class Yeah, sure, sure. Sir, can please go ahead. Father, we come to the throne of grace. Thank you for this, Lord. Thank you for this learning, Lord. Whatever we have learned, Lord, it should be used for your kingdom expansion, Lord. Let we will be. Use for your Lord as the vessel, Lord, as it's kept in the King's table, Lord. We should be used, Lord. Mold us, Lord. Make us in a way that we, you, that is suitable to your Lord. Do, Lord, not our will, but Lord, your will be should be done in our lives, Lord. as we whatever you have learned this lord in prayer and intercession lord whatever the chapters whatever the programs lord we have gone through lord let it should be not be wasted lord but the seed the teacher has sown in our hearts lord it should be uh, not be a sapling but it should be a like a banyan tree lord in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you thank you sudkinu and thank you everyone for joining along and uh, all the best for your assignments yeah so take care god bless you